This is The Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole. But the real star of today's show is the Extreme Sim Racing XXT V2 wheel stand. The SXT is a super heavy duty wheel stand that can even handle a direct drive wheel when it comes to its strength. It's another beast of a wheel stand. And I got to tell you, at this point, after a few really strong, like direct drive strength wheel stands that I've reviewed, it's made me come up with a new classification of sim rig, that being a mini rig. This isn't just a wheel stand anymore. This is just a mini rig. The XXT is made by Extreme Sim Racing out of Brazil, who have a selection of rigs, stands, and other sim racing products. Despite being from Brazil, they also offer free shipping to anywhere in the United States. The SXT V2 wheel stand is a portable or collapsible design that does maintain that sturdiness or strength that hardcore sim racers demand. The SXT is made of 5 64 inch steel tubing with a powder coated matte finish. The SXT is also a very highly adjustable mini rig that utilizes polyurethane bushings for ease of adjustment. The stock wheel stand starts out at $229 and that does include the upper shifter mount and even a cup holder. The XXT also comes with a variety of different add-ons and I am testing it with the monitor holder at $139 that will accommodate up to a 50 inch monitor. However, they do recommend not exceeding 42 inches, but I guess it'll hold a 50 inch monitor if you really need it to. In addition to that, I'm also testing it with a lower shifter mount for an additional $49 and the articulating keyboard holder for $49 as well. So this version of the XXT V2, or the version that I'm testing, along with those add-ons, comes in at $466. And again, with all those accessories attached, you can see why I'm now calling it a mini rig. There's also an add-on seat available for $320 that literally turns this into a full-on SIM chassis. The SXT V2 is pre-drilled and compatible with all Logitech, Thrustmaster, and Fanatic gear that you're going to find out there. Now, when you get the XXT V2, it comes in a single box for the main part of the rig, along with all the accessories coming in their own individual boxes. When you open the box, you will first find the wheel deck hoop, followed by the main part of the base that is mostly assembled. Then comes the wheel deck and the parts box. Within the parts box is the cup holder, the upper shift mount, and the needed hardware along with the instructions. I then unpack the accessories starting with the shifter mount which is also mostly pre-assembled and then the keyboard tray also pre-assembled and then finally the monitor holder which came in its own box and included a handful of pieces that will have to be put together starting with the two upright arms, two monitor mounts, two adjustable arms, a cross brace, a computer tray, and the needed hardware along with its instructions. The assembly itself is very fast and could be done by just about anyone on planet Earth and the main part of the structure is mostly assembled right out of the box. But we do start with opening up that main portion of the base. There are sliders that allow for the pedal tray to tilt up and down when the base is opened up. Next is adding the upright hoop into the polyurethane bushings at the top of the base. These are tightened down by adding the knob type bolts to lock down the upright hoop. The wheel deck is held in place with the supplied hardware, two bolts holding the pivot point and then a third bolt in the adjustment slider area to hold its angle in place. The cup holder and shifter mount then bolt directly to the sides of the wheel deck and are reversible for left or right hand shifting. The pedal tray was pre-installed but it can be adjusted in angle with the lockdown knobs and is very sturdy under a load. Add the adjustable feet and the main portion of the XXT V2 wheel stand is now complete. Very easy, very quick. We are done in under 10 minutes. And at this point, we're only in for $229 and we have a highly functional, very sturdy, very portable sim rig. Add yourself a Logitech or a lightweight wheel and pedal set. You could still collapse this and put it away in the closet with the greatest of ease. However, for us, we're all in. We're going for that mini rig status and we're gonna be adding all sorts of accessories, starting off with the lower shift mount. It attaches directly to the wheel stand via a pickup point on the right side under the adjustable knob for the upright. I actually removed the mount from the arm that was pre-assembled and attached it to the base and then reattached the arm with its four bolts. The lower mount only works as a right hand shifter. The keyboard tray mounts in the same spot opposite the shifter. 
I was able to hold it up in the air and add the bolt that attaches it to the base. These attachments went on very easy and very quickly. And then came the monitor holder. And it is a monitor holder, not a monitor stand, as in it attaches to the SIM rig. It's not a freestanding monitor stand. It goes on with two arms that attach to the main portion of the rig. Each upright has a spot for two bolts to go through it. They wrap around the back legs of the wheelbase and allow gravity to do a good portion of holding them in place. Each of those arms attach to the side of the computer deck with the supplied hardware and then that assembly is placed onto the wheelbase. It's a little tricky to get the bolts in place and the stand level and the position desired, but with a little patience it all goes together okay. Then we can fully tighten down the four bolts, two per side, and move on. The upright extensions then attach to the cross brace with the supplied hardware and then that assembly slides down into the installed uprights through the polyurethane bushings with its height being held in place by tightening knobs. I accidentally mounted the cross brace section backwards, had to flip it around 180. It was really obvious my monitor wouldn't fit, flipped around 180 and everything worked out. Now the monitor mounts are the type just like you'd use for a TV going on a wall mount in your living room. The type with the little hooks that go onto the crossbars that we have here. However, all of my monitors had recessed mounts. They were actually inset a little bit and it wouldn't work. I did have to buy a Visa adapter plate, which only cost me 13 bucks, mount that to the monitor, and then mount the mounts to that Visa adapter, and then hook that onto the cross brace. It all worked out fine. It was very easy. Only cost me that extra $13, but the monitor holder in general took longer than the entire rig to put together. And with that said, my total build time was still under 30 minutes. Now at this point, we're in for $466, and you can see why I'm now calling this a mini rig. This is everything you could possibly need to sim race, with the exception of the seat itself, which you could, of course, add on later. And at this point, it's also gained a lot of weight. And with that, it's lost its portability, in my opinion. This is no longer a lightweight wheel stand that we can fold up and throw into the closet. It's become a beast of a mini rig. So now let's talk about installing our components and the adjustability of the Extreme Sim Racing XXT V2 chassis, starting off with the wheel deck. Now, as I mentioned, it's pre-drilled for Thrustmaster, Logitech, Fanatic wheels, pedals, all those kind of things. So it's gonna be just finding the right holes and screwing in the hardware. And I'm gonna be installing a Thrustmaster TGT wheel and pedal set. The deck height is adjustable via the large knobs on the uprights. The entire assembly moves up and down about 10 inches with a low deck point of about 33 inches from the floor and goes all the way up to about 44 inches off the floor at its high point. The wheel deck can be adjusted a massive amount from pointing down towards the ground all the way up into the sky and will work with any driving position out there. For the pedal tray, there are three slits cut in the deck on each side going front to back. These are compatible with Logitech, Thrustmaster, and Fanatic pedals and give you a huge amount of front to back distance, about 22 inches worth to mount the pedals. The angle adjustment is very clever and utilizes two different vertical tracks. Using the big tightening knobs, you can loosen things up and slide the pedal angle up and down from flat on the ground about four and a half inches off the floor to a crazy 45 degree angle if anyone possibly desired that much. The overall adjustability of the pedals exceed any scenario that I can possibly imagine. The keyboard tray is pretty simple. It uses a clamping slider that will accommodate and grip a keyboard anywhere from five to eight and a half inches tall. The only other adjustment to the keyboard holder is how far you move it away or towards you. There is no tilt or angle adjustment. The shifter can be mounted on the upper plate that is a fixed position right next to the wheel or on the lower mount that is sold separately and is in a much more realistic position and adjustable as well. The upper mount will work with Logitech and Thrustmaster H-Pattern shifters, and with the lower mount, you can actually use the Fanatic H-Pattern shifter as well. With the shifter installed on the lower mount, you have a fair amount of adjustment for it. You can loosen the four mounting bolts and adjust the entire arm's angle by a few degrees, giving you about 10 inches of up and down adjustment. Then with the knob, you can adjust the length of the telescoping rod by about five inches front to back, and you can rotate it to any angle that you desire. 
Then the shifter plate is held in place with four bolts that can be adjusted in angle as well to just about any position you could possibly need. And then finally, the monitor holder. It can be adjusted up and down about 10 and a half inches, and then there's a recline adjustment of about 10 degrees. So for me, when I test a wheel stand, there are a couple of things that I do try to take into consideration, like what seat are you going to choose? It's going to determine everything as far as your seating position and angle of your components. And for me, I want to use something that's common to just about any household. So I turn to one of my dining room chairs. I mean, who needs four chairs in their dining room anyway? Now, the problem with the dining room chair is it's a very flat bottom seat that's a total 90 degree angle, not exactly perfect for comfort, and the rig's gonna have to be able to accommodate that with my seating position being about 19 inches off the floor. But despite that not perfect seat, I was able to adjust the XXT V2's wheel deck to a perfect height and angle for my desire. That would determine all of my other needs. From there, I was able to easily get the right pedal distance, height, and angle with no problem at all. And then finally, the shifter as well. It achieved my desired height, angle, and distance with no problem. And then lastly, I adjust my monitor height and angle to my liking, got that perfect driving position, and now it's ready to race. Now you know one of my favorite things in the world is building sim rigs. However, the real fun starts when we get to race them. The XXV2, we're gonna find out, is it ready for the real rigors of sim racing? Now when you pull up, to the XXV2, it doesn't even feel or look like a wheel stand. Again, this is more of a mini rig than a wheel stand. It is so substantial and so complete with gear that it just has that mini rig feel about it. And when I pressed on the brake pedal for the first time, I got a good indication of just how solid and heavy this sim rig is. The chair was immediately thrown back under the load of braking. I was gonna need a solution. It was very obvious that this rig was going nowhere. It's heavy and those feet did a great job of gripping my wood floors. So I think it was Bucho who suggested and I grabbed an old pair of tennis shoes and put them under the front legs of the chair that I was sitting in. This offered grip and actually gave me a little bit more of a reclined angle. And after a full brake pressure test, we are all good to go. And since we started our driving focus looking at the pedals, let's stay on them and talk about the pedal deck and how well it held the pedals. I have to admit, I was skeptical about the up and down adjustment and its ability to hold that angle. When driving in the dining room chair, I did find that I wanted a little bit of angle on the pedal deck. And I had them mounted in a position that certainly would slide if there was a weakness. I'm actually using a lightly sprung load cell mod on these pedals and they do take an extra bit of force. And even with a heavier than stock pedal, the Extreme Sim Racing XXT V2 chassis pedal tray held strong. No slip at all, no adjustment to my angle. The resistance behind the pedals was firm and like I said, strong enough to push me back in my chair. Now it's time to focus on the wheel deck. The wheel deck is the most critical part of a sim racing chassis. Any wiggle or movement of parts is just unacceptable. The wheel deck was surprisingly strong as well. Starting off with the wiggle aspect, the left to right movement of the deck when sawing on the wheel. I was using a TGT wheel with my optimal force feedback settings on it. The kind of settings that I would use in a real race. And under those loads, there was zero wiggle at all to be felt by the rig. This is true in terms of wiggle or flexing, and it was also true of the XXT V2 Mini Rig's feet, ability to keep it planted on the ground when sawing on the wheel. When driving, I felt no left or right or twisting of the rig at all. When reviewing a sim chassis of any kind, the other direction of failure on many of them is their ability to hold the angle at the angle that was set. Pull down on the wheel too hard, and Mini Rigs will let the deck slide down to a lower angle. The XXT V2 held strong lap after lap. Not once did it change its angle, and not once did I need to readjust it from unfelt movement. And when that change of angle doesn't occur, it's because it is holding strong in that up and down or front to back pressure that we load on our wheels at times of driving. The XXV2 held strong against those forces very well and had no noticeable up and down wheel flexing when driving. In fact, when driving, the wheel deck was strong and stable enough to hold a drink in my cup holder without falling out or even spillage. And then on top of that, I used the upper shifter mount to hold my mouse. 
and it didn't even fall off while driving. So before we even get to the add-ons, let's talk about the XXT V2 wheel stand in its basic form. At $229, we accomplished a perfect driving position, a very stable rig, a solid wheel deck at the right angle, a right pedal deck at the right distance and angle for our needs, and we maintained a certain level of portability in that basic structure. With the addition of the add-ons, we're going to lose some of that, but let's go ahead and talk about the add-ons and how it held its components. The shifter mount got that shifter right where I wanted it to be. The right height, the right angle and distance. And the shifting arm does a great job of staying in place and keeping its adjustments. Under the load of shifting, it does have a slight hint of wiggle that is not very noticeable when driving. But when comparing it to the strength of the wheel deck, it does wiggle a tiny bit more. The keyboard holder is essential despite not being very adjustable. It just swings in and out, but it is so much better than leaving it resting on the floor. I was able to reach over fairly easily and touch the F1, F2, and F3 buttons for iRacing's black box, but typing is still at a strange angle while seated. It did keep my keyboard in place and never dropped it even once. And the last accessory, I have to admit, is the one that I had the most skepticism about, that being the monitor holder. Not only a monitor holder, but also a computer or console tray as well. For me, this is begging for excessive screen movement while driving, but much to my amazement, it held pretty strong and didn't wiggle to any point of distraction or that I even noticed. The computer tray or console deck, whatever you want to call it, is a nice feature to have, although my computers are rather large and very heavy and I wasn't going to test it with that. However, it would work perfectly for a console or even your power supply or other things that you just want up out of the way. And it comes in at about 11 inches by 17 inches, giving you an idea of its usable space. Well, the Extreme Sim Racing XXT V2 wheel stand is certainly a beast of a mini rig. I mean, it's sturdy, it's adjustable, it holds all of your essential gear. I mean, all of your gear, and that's not normal for a wheel stand. It's got plenty of adjustment, plenty of compatibility, and we've talked about what it's like driving with the XXT wheel stand as well. But let's go ahead and make it perfectly clear. Let's go ahead and break it down with the good, the not so good, and the bottom line, starting off with the good, and that is, it's a great price. Affordable add-ons, shifter, keyboard holder, monitor holder. Monitor holder also holds a small computer or console or other gear. Very sturdy. Highly adjustable. Able to achieve many different driving positions. Lower shifter mount works great for a wheel stand. Awesome cup holder. Adjustable feet really give it a solid footing. All-in-one solution, mini rig, not a wheel stand. Does not move, but your chair will. Expandable to a full SIM chassis, add-on seat available. Pre-drilled for Logitech, Thrustmaster, and Fanatic gear. Great option for VR users or people with limited space. And now on to the not so good. The powder coating can be scratched. Very heavy for what's considered a portable rig. Needed to buy a Visa adapter to mount my monitors. Monitor holder a little too far for smaller monitors. Wheel deck and monitor height adjustments are difficult once your components are installed.
And now on to the bottom line. At only $229, the Extreme Sim Racing XXT V2 wheel stand is one of the best wheel stands that I've ever tested. In that basic structure, you get all of the strength of that rig. And in addition to that, it comes with the upper shifter mount and the cup holder. You get all of the adjustability, you get all the compatibility, all of that included in that $229 price, which is very affordable. As tested with the monitor holder, the keyboard holder, and the lower shifter mount, our price has crept up to $466 and is actually getting pretty close to the cost of some less expensive sim rigs out on the market, but you are getting a lot for your money. Now, if you're into shifting, if you use an H-pattern shifter and shifting is a big part of your sim racing, I'm going to tell you, the lower shift arm is a must add on for this rig. It's a great for the bang for the buck. It gets you great adjustability, gets the shifter exactly where you want it, and it has no more wiggle than some much more substantial rigs out there. So it's a pretty good deal for the rig. Now, by the time you've added all of the add-ons to this chassis, it is no longer portable. I mean, it has gotten very heavy. It's hardly collapsible, and you're not going to be able to just tuck it away. And that's why I'm going to say the XXT V2 chassis, it is no longer a wheel stand. It is a mini rig. I guess as the mini rig has emerged in our hobby, I am thrilled to see that there are options for the hardcore sim racers who demand a fine rig. You can now have a limited budget or limited space and still be able to get a rig that is sturdy, that is built for all of our hardware and gets the job done without breaking the bank or taking up too much space. Despite not being portable or put awayable when equipped with a monitor, a computer, a shifter, a keyboard and all that, it still does take less space than a full rig. You can put that seat away and just leave this kind of in the corner. For a lot of people in VR, they do need a monitor, but they're not going to be using it that much. It could be a tiny little monitor. This monitor stand is going to be perfect. It's minimalistic. It does take up less space and it solves that other problem because if you're going to build an entire monitor stand, and that's going to cost you extra money. So it does make it an inexpensive option for some people, and it could be a good starting point, especially when you consider that you keep, can keep adding to it later, add the monitor later, add the shifter later. You can even add the full seat, turning it into a full sim rig later. It just lets you keep building and building as you get more serious or dedicate more space to the hobby. So in the end, I have to say, I was very impressed with the Extreme Sim Racing XXT V2 chassis. It was sturdy, it was adjustable, it was pre-drilled for all the common hardware, and in its base configuration, it does maintain that portability of a wheel stand, but it becomes serious enough for a hardcore sim racer. So I think I've told you everything that you could possibly want to know. If you want to know more, go check them out at extremesimracing.com. You can see this, the wheel stand along with all they do make full rigs they have all the add-ons and other accessories there at the site that you can check out that's going to do it for this one be sure to subscribe to the channel be sure to thumbs up if you've enjoyed our show and be sure to tell a friend this is the sim pit i'm sean cole and i'll see you on the track